Greetings all, Nick and Justin here from Those Hairy Gamers. How are you doing, Justin? I'm doing well. Yourself? E very good, thank you. It's time to continue on with our Ixalan full set review, Tribe by Tribe. It's time for some dinosaurs. Dino action! Dino action <laughs> indeed. Dino might! So, going up in rarity and alphabetic order, let's take a look at all the cards that are relevant to the Dino Tribe. Some of these cards may not be specific to the Dino Tribe, but I decided to put them in these videos because flavor-wise, they match the tribe. First of all, we have Ancient Brontador. It's 6 and 2 green for a 9-9 dinosaur. Decent vanilla. We have Colossal Dreadmore, 4 and 2 green for a 6-6 six, six with Trample. Slightly more relevant, probably not that great. Yep. Next we have Commune with Dinosaurs. This is a sorcery for 1 green mana. Look at the top 5 cards of your library. You may reveal a dinosaur or land card from amongst them and put it into your hand. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in any order. So this does a bit of digging. I'm yeah. glad that it's green and not blue. I mean, it's got to be not blue because it's dinosaurs. Uh, it's good. It goes digging. I don't think it's going to be amazing in standard, but I think in draft, if you're dinosaur heavy, this is going to help you smooth out your draw. See, I disagree. I reckon in standard it'd be perfectly fine. I guess the land is useful as well, okay, making sure you have all the mana. Yeah. I just think at the one and two drops, we have a lot of good ramping stuff, which I think I'd probably focus on instead. Uh, crush the Ramparts. Two and a green. It's an instant. Target creature gets plus three, plus three, and gains trample until end of turn. That's not bad. Um, it's the giant growth of the set. Not hugely relevant at three. In standard, we're going to have better options, but it'll be cool for, like, draft and stuff like that. Next up, we have Demystify. Cost one white mana. It's an instant destroy target enchantment. Really cool reprint. Um, very relevant in Ixalan because we have these legendary enchantments slash lands going on. Yeah. Um, and in terms of what's in standard right now, it's useful. It's useful. Good sideboard card. I think I'm going to put a couple of these in every white deck I play. Uh, demolish. Three in a red. Destroy target artifact or land. It's probably too expensive to be hugely relevant. Yeah. But I, I like that having this in limited, you can slow down your opponent pretty massively and then you're ahead of mana and then you're playing big dinosaurs and they're not having many answers for it. Nah. Yeah, it's great. Four mana at sorcery speed, this doesn't feel great. No. Next we have Dual Shot. It's an instant for one red. It does one damage to up to two target creatures. Uh, a nice little tickly burn spell. Yeah. Um, yeah. There are better stuff in the format, but if you draft this, it could be good, could be useful. Yeah, it's not a bad reprint for draft. And it is also worth noting that we have Enrage mechanics in Ixalan mm. now. So this could Enrage two of your own dinosaurs. I think there are probably better ways of doing that more reliably. But this is a consideration for that as well. So yeah. in, in a vacuum, this card's average. In Ixalan, it may have a lot more relevance. Frenzied Raptor, two and a red for a 4-2 dinosaur. Not bad stats. Nothing to write home about. Next up, we have Grazing Whiptail. Cost two and two green. It is a 3-4 dinosaur with reach. Lots of vanilla in the dinosaurs, isn't there? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's a nice to collect for the art, but yeah, there's, there's no reason you play them standing like that. Exili's Diviner, one and a green for a 0-3 human druid. When Exili's Diviner enters the battlefield, it explores. I like that a lot. Yeah. So it's a 1-4 for 2, or it's an 0-3 and you get a land. Yeah. There are better ramp options for dinosaurs at the 2-drop slot, but this is still decent if you draft it. Next up we have Ixili's Keeper, cost 1 and a green. This is a 2-2 two -two human shaman with the activated ability for 7 green, tap and sack it. Target creature gets plus 5, plus 5, and trample until end of turn. Now this is part of a cycle of very low to the ground creatures that have 8 mana cost activated abilities. Okay. And can basically close out a game if you're doing well. Um, yeah. they're, they're all a common, but they are very much rely on the board state. Yeah. Uh, 8 mana just feels like way too much for something that has to survive early game into late game. Yeah. But it still might win you a game. It still might be fun to draft. Yeah, yeah. I, don't, I don't know. I don't yeah, know. I, I look at this and go, okay, it's draft. Kinjali's Caller. One and a white for a human cleric. Zero three. Dinosaur spells you cast cost one less to cast. So this is a card that will make your dinosaurs cheaper. So you're going to be playing four of them. Pretty much. This is solid. This is really, really good. This is probably the one drop you want to play in the dinosaur deck. Next, we have Looming Altasaur. Costs three and a white. It's a 1-7 vanilla. It, cool. It, yeah. It, it can block. Uh, Nest Robber. One and a red for a 2-1 with haste. If you're playing an aggro deck, maybe it's good, but meh. 
I don't like the one toughness. For mm. me, that's what makes it bad. Yeah, you might get a swing out of it. You might hit them for two, but that's pretty much all the value you're getting out of this. Yeah. Next, we have New Horizons. It's two and a green for an enchantment aura. Enchant land. When New Horizons enter the battlefield, put a plus one, plus one counter on target creature you control. Enchanted land has tap, add two mana of any color to your mana pool. It's it's okay ramp, but at the three costs, I don't love it. I don't uh, love it. I suppose it's ramp and also making your creatures a bit bigger. So, Pterodon Knight. Three and a white for a 3-3 three, three human knight. Pterodon knight has flying as long as you control a dinosaur. That's not bad. Yeah, it's good in the dinosaur heavy decks. Pounce is a one and green instant. Target creature you control fights target creature you don't control. This is very, very relevant. This is actually a really good common for the dinosaurs, I think. Uh, fight is a very important mechanic for dinosaurs because of enrage. Yeah. And the fact that this is at instant speed means you can enrage trigger whenever you want. Indeed. That's why I see this being a very, very powerful card. Yeah. We had Prey Upon, which was mm. only one green mana, but that's at sorcery speed. Yeah. I think the extra mana for instant is totally worth it. Raptor Companion, one and a white for a 3-1 dinosaur. That's a very aggro white card, isn't it? And he, look, he's <laughs> dancing. He's <laughs> dancing. We have Ravenous Daggertooth. That's a cool name. Two and a green for a 3-2 dinosaur. When Ravenous Daggertooth is dealt damage, you gain two life. Now, that's a decent enrage ability, but he only has two toughness. So mm. it's going to be really hard to use. It's probably the clunkiest enrage card in the set. Um, it's okay. It's a 3 2 for two, and you'll get some life probably when it dies. Mm. But that's pretty much it. There's probably better cards in the three drop slot. Ryle. One red for a sorcery. Ryle deals one damage to target creature you control. That creature gains trample until end of turn and draw a card. This is good. Mm. This is good for Enrage. You're drawing a card, you're getting your Enrage thing, and you're gaining Trample. Next we have Shining Aerosaur for four and a white. It's a 3-4 Flying Dinosaur. Another French Vanilla. Mm. Um, but for five mana, eh, it's okay. It's a bit mm. below curve. If you've got nothing else in the five drop slot in your draft, I feel sorry for you, um, but, <laughs> but play it. Slash of Talons is one white for an instant. Slash of Talons deals two damage to target attacking or blocking creature. So you can do that to your own creatures. You can do that to opponent's creatures to get rid of them. Oh, I didn't think about Enrage. Yeah, that gives it some more relevance. And the fact that it's less power than Impeccable Timing, where it's yeah. only two damage, means it's easier to use with Enrage. Mm. Yeah, okay, that's got some good usability. Spiked Tail Ceratops is a foreign green for a 4-4 dinosaur. Spiked Tail Ceratops can block an additional creature each combat uh i don't think that ability is good enough to overcome the fact that it's a four four for five no. uh it, it could do a couple of small creatures but ixalan isn't exactly about small creatures so no. it's it's not so good in this set sunrise seeker four and a white for a three three human scout with vigilance and when it enters the battlefield, it explores. If you're lucky, you get a 4-4 with Vigilance for 5 mana. Or oh, you pull a land out. Um, I mean, basically, I think of Explorer as basically having plus 1, plus 1. Because pulling out a land is almost as valuable as doing that. Next, we have Sun Crowned Hunters. Cost 4 and 2 red. It is a 5-4 dinosaur. In Rage, whenever Sun Crowned Hunters is dealt damage, it deals 3 damage to target opponent. Ooh, I like this one. This one's interesting. I like this one a lot. Yeah. Um, especially a common. It feels really good. It costs six mana. Territorial Hammer Skull is two and a white for a 2-3 dinosaur. And whenever Territorial Hammer Skull attacks, tap target creature and opponent controls. Yeah, good aggro white card. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's going to be useful. Good for tempo plays. Yeah, I, I can see this card working well. Thrash of Raptors is a 3-3 three, three dinosaur for three in red. As long as you control another dinosaur, Thrasher of Raptors gets plus two, plus O, oh, and has trample. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, below okay. curve if you don't have any other dinosaurs, but you really should. Yeah. If you're drafting and you have a decent amount of dinosaurs, it's a 5 3 with trample. Hmm. That's just really good and solid. That's going to close out games for you. Yeah. Good I'm, card. Yeah, not bad. Tilanali's Knight. One and a red for a 2 2. Human Knight. Whenever Tilanali's Knight attacks, if you control a dinosaur, Tilanali's Knight gets plus one, plus one until end of turn. Yeah. Uh, like, it's okay, but I'd rather have other dinosaurs. So that was the commons. Now for the uncommons. We yeah. have... Starting off with Steadfast Armasaur. That's a cool name. <laughs> three and a white for a 2-3 dinosaur with Vigilance. Has the activated ability for one and a white and tap it. 
Steadfast Armor Sword deals damage equal to its toughness to target creature blocking or blocked by it. Huh. That, that's a that's a bit of a mind warp, but it's yeah. got vigilance, so you can use that ability. I, I get that. Yeah. So it's kind of like it, it attacks and then. It taps and it turns around and hits you with its tail sort of thing. Isn't oh, it? yeah, and the tail represents its toughness. That's yeah. very good flavor-wise. We have Atsakan Archer, two and a green for a 1-4 human archer with reach. When Atsakan Archer enters the battlefield, you may have it fight another target creature. Meh? Yeah, I know. It's got one power. Yeah. That's that's not exciting at all. No. Uh, um... <clears throat> You got to. You have to fight something with one toughness and not four or more power. It feels so awkward, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah I don't know. The card just feels really clunky. It's a two, you know, two, it's a three cost one four with reach. That's not terrible. Probably not worth being an uncommon though. Belligerent Brontodon for five green and white. I love these names. <laughs> it is a four six dinosaur. Each creature you control assigns combat damage equal to its toughness rather than its power. This is a build-around card. Um, this is very splashy for an uncommon, I actually got to say. I mm-hmm. really like this. Yeah, it's just using the, the sheer volume of the body of your creatures. Um, very relevant for dinosaurs. They've yeah. got some very tough bodies. Yeah, all of a sudden, all those vanilla ones that are like a 1-7. was it? A 1-7 for 4, something like that? Yeah. That's now swinging for 7. seven. That's that's okay. Yeah, that feels like you could work around this. I mean, this guy costs 6, and I feel like... If a card costs six, you can't always rely on it coming out. Mm. I feel like that's pushing a bit more. Like four or five, yeah, but six is ooh, it's pushing it a bit. But I still want to try and do a build yeah. around it. I like ramp like, into it and yeah, make it work. You, you could still... I reckon he's okay in a league. Bellowing Adjasaur. Five and a white for a three, five dinosaur. Enrage. Whenever Bellowing Aegisaur is dealt damage, put a plus one, plus one counter on each other creature you control. Wow, that's good. It's really, really good. And we know there are ways to remotely activate enrage abilities. Yeah. It's a six cost three five. That's not ideal. But um, uh, if anyone else follows Saffron Olives, he pointed out that this is an amazing combo with Walking Ballista. Because you ping it <laughs> and the Walking Ballista gets plus one, plus one counters. Yeah. Yeah, it's that's pretty disgusting. Yeah. Now, you can't ping it more than four times in a turn. And if your opponent has a burn spell in hand, yeah, okay, they're, they're going to deal yeah. with it. Still, you ping it once or twice, suddenly your board has just become quite massive. Next, we have Boned Horncrest for three and a red. It's a 5-5 five, five dinosaur, and it can't attack or block alone. I, I like it. Uh, yeah, that uh, makes perfect sense flavor-wise as to... Yeah, he's yeah. Been, he's been um helped along. Uh, I don't like that he can't attack alone. I feel like on that body, I'd want to be able to attack alone. But that's a downside of making a five five for four. Yeah, and it's not a huge downside. You no. can definitely build decks that are a creature heavy enough, aggressive enough that that's not going to matter, and you're going to get good value out of this card. Yeah, <laughs> charging monstrosaur. He he's fairly big actually if you look at him. Compared to that little human dude. Yep. <laughs> Four and a red for a 5-5 five, five dinosaur with trample and haste. That's reality that's, smasher. That's good. That's reality smasher without the without the counters. That's really good and uncommon. Yeah. Um, the body's good. The um, creature chops relevant. Yeah. Uh, this, this is just a good card. Probably one of the best um, French vanilla cards in the set. Yeah, I'd definitely. say. Easily, yeah. Next we have Dinosaur Stampede. It is a two and red instant Attacking creatures get plus two, plus two until end of turn. Dinosaurs you control get trample until end of turn. Ooh, yeah. this is cool. Yeah, I, I feel like it's awkward because it's really good in a go-wide deck, but dinosaurs don't go wide. Uh, you're still giving trample. Yeah, so. I guess so. I, you'd really want two or three at least swinging to make this worthwhile. Yeah. And I feel like if you're already swinging with three dinosaurs, is this going to be the card that makes you win the game? I feel like you've well, already got a pretty good chance of that as it is. Yeah, but if most dinosaurs don't have... Well, some dinosaurs it, have trample, but if you're attacking with ones which don't have trample... Yeah, if they get chumped, this is amazing. Uh, Drover of the Mighty. One and a green for a 1-1 one, one human druid. Drover of the Mighty gets plus two, plus two as long as you control the dinosaur. Tap, add one mana or of any colour to your mana pool. This is the two drop in the fire, in the yeah. dinosaur deck, yeah. I reckon. Oh, three three body. Most yeah. for most of the game. He's ramping to make sure you get the dinosaur the next down the next turn. Yeah. I, I like him. Yeah, He's I like good. him a lot. Emissary of Sunrise. Praise be to the sun. <laughs> two and a white for a two one human cleric with first strike. When Emissary of the Sunrise enters the battlefield, it explores. 
that feels really good. Hmm. That feels like one of the better explore cards for sure. Um, it's a 3-2 with first strike for three. I mean, we've had better versions of that in the past with like Thalia from uh, Eldritch Moon. Hmm. Oh, it could draw a land out. It, it's not. It's not sort of pushing rare status, no, but, but I like it. And yeah. when explore is relevant, that's going to do a lot of work for you. Imperial Aerosaur three and a white for a three three dinosaur with flying. When Imperial Aerosaur enters the battlefield, another target creature you control gets plus one plus one, and gains flying until end of turn. That's kind of terrifying. That's quite nasty. Yeah. It's All a, of a sudden to bring, like, a 5-5 five, five trampling thing to give it flying as well, just to... So what's the whole flavour here? He's picking up a dinosaur and throwing it through the air at you or something? Yeah. He can't do that to a why, T-Rex. Why but not? I, I guess he can. I guess he Dep- can. Depending on how big this aerosaur is. He's a 4-drop 3-3 three, three with Flyer alone. is enough to see him get played occasionally. Yeah. With that ability, this is good. This is just a really good card to capitalise on big dinosaurs. Yeah. Imperial Lancer for a white. It is a human knight. Imperial Lancer has double strike as long as you control a dinosaur. Yeah, I don't like this. I don't like this. It's mm. it's going to get double strike, sure, but it's going to be later on when, yeah. when it's less relevant. Um, you can pump it to make double strike more relevant, but I feel like you're not going to pump your one drops in the dinosaur deck. You're pumping your dinosaurs. Yeah, I suppose that's true. It just feels a bit awkward at the one drop. Uh, I think we already have a ramping white human for the dinosaurs. That's the card that you're playing over this every time. Yeah. <laughs> Otepic Huntmaster. One and a red for a one two. Dinosaur spells you cast cost one less to cast. Tap. Target dinosaur gains haste until end of turn. I amended what I said before. This is the other two drop you put in the dinosaur deck. Yeah. Yep. This is a this is a four of. Ah, uh, this is this is nuts. This is nuts. Yeah. Um, there are dinosaurs that you play, and their abilities are great if they happen to last through their summoning sickness. Mm. This guy don't care about summoning sickness. Drop the dinosaur down. Give it haste and swing, swing. with it immediately, and yeah. get all the value straight away. Yep. This guy is nuts. This is yeah. a four of, uh, like the other dude that ramps, and you're... Ugh. I can't believe there's two cards that say dinosaurs cost one less to cast. Yeah. Uh, and terrifying. neither of them are legendary. Oh. <laughs> it's yeah, it's going make, gonna to make standard interesting. It's going to make standard very interesting. Raging Sawtooth for three red green. It's a 5-5 five, five dinosaur with trample. When Raging Sawtooth enters the battlefield, it deals one damage to every other creature. Now, this is interesting. This is one of the reasons that I waited to make this video. I didn't want to review this as soon as we saw it because we didn't really understand how it interacted with other creatures. This is an enrage bomb. Yeah. That's what this is. Wait till late game. you got one or two dinosaurs within rage triggers. You play this. You ping all your opponent's creatures and you trigger two enrage abilities or three or however many you have on yeah. your side of the board. Yeah, this could, and it's great. This is going to be good. And imagine that with the other dinosaur that with enrage deals three damage to an opponent. You've dealt one damage to each of their creatures and dealt three damage to him. This exactly is, this right. This is good. This is really, really good. Um, it's it's a high curve bomb. It's weird. Dinosaurs have cards that cost around about four or five that actually mm. want to come after the more expensive dinosaurs, which is kind of weird to think about. So it mm. might be a tad clunky the way you play this. But mm. I think as a late game bomb, this is definitely like a one or two of. Yeah. It's going to be great. Rallying Roar to an A white for an instant. Creatures you control get plus one, plus one until end of turn and untap them. So pseudo vigilance and plus one, plus one. That's pretty good. Yeah, you can swing with everything one turn. On your opponent's turn, when they swing, you untap all your creatures and they're all boosted. Hmm. It's a good combat trick, but hmm, it's very situational. Ranging Raptors for two and a green. It is a 2-3 body dinosaur. Enrage. When Raging Raptors is dealt damage, you may search your library for a basic land, put it into the battlefield tapped, then shuffle your library. This, this is one of the best Enrage abilities yeah. out of everyone. This is bonkers. Um, it's a dinosaur. It's a, sort of one of those mid rangey dinosaurs. It's the three drop, so it's going to be one of the cheaper dinosaurs you play. Mm. And it's ramping. Tell me a bad thing about this card, and... Yeah. And I'll tell you you're wrong, pretty yeah. much. Um, it's good. I mean, it's a 2-3 three for three. It's not ideal, but you're not playing it for its body. You're playing it for that amazing enrage ability. Yeah, definitely. That's just what this card's all about, and I love it. Raptor Hatchling. One and a red for a 1-1 one, one dinosaur with enrage... Whenever Raptor Hatchling is dealt damage, it creates a 3-3 dinosaur creature token with trample. Good value. 
good value for two uh, for four four across two bodies. Yeah, you don't get them at the same time. Um, mm. There is also the slight possibility that you boost it, and then it cops damage. Oh yeah. There, there is ways to make this and the next creature appear next to it, which is weird because it's obviously about. I'm growing up. That's what yeah. that's what the, the hatchling's trying to do. Savage Stomp. I really like the look of this card. Two and a green for a sorcery. <laughs> Savage Stomp costs two less to cast if it targets a dinosaur you control. Put a plus one, plus one counter on target creature you control. Then that target creature fights creature you don't control. Enrage oh. and... And it's giving you a plus one, plus one counter to make the enrage less painful. Mm. If you happen, if you happen to find a creature on your opponent's board with one power mm. and you have a raptor hatchling, yeah. you plus one, plus one the raptor hatchling and make it fight that one and then you ah, get the big guy. That's cool. And for one mana, this is solid. I mean, we have Prey Upon, which is one mana sorcery that just fights two creatures. Let's just treat this as a one mana card. Yeah. You're playing this in dinosaur decks. You're not playing it in stuff that doesn't use dinosaurs. It's a Prey Upon plus a counter. Yeah. Very good, very solid card. I like this a lot. It's triggering a rage. It's doing all the things we want to do in this deck. Sheltering Light. One white mana instant. Target creature gains indestructible until end of turn. Scry one. It's a, it's a good two for one if someone tries to burn your dinosaur with enrage and then you yeah. just give it indestructible. Yeah. So now I have enrage and you don't kill it. <laughs> Sky Terror is a red and white for a 2-2 flying menace dinosaur. Very solid French vanilla card. Yeah, this is good. Um, flying and menace is a real pain to deal with. Um, it means you need two flyers to block it. Um, there isn't too much that can deal with this. No, and not really. much to say. I just really like this. Snapping Sailback. Four and a green for a 4-4 four, four dinosaur with flash. Enrage, whenever snapping sail back is dealt damage, put a plus one plus one counter on it. I foot, foot, flash in, block, it becomes a 5-5. Five, five. Sneaky. I like it. It's good. Yeah. Five for 5-5 five, five with flash. Yeah. Mm. Any day of the week. I'll yeah. take that. Thundering spine back. Oh, the cool names continue. For five and green, green is a 5-5. Five, five. Other dinosaurs you control, get a plus one plus one. It's a Lord, Justin. Mm. And for five and a green, create a 3-3 three, three green dinosaur creature token with trample. This is a solid Lord. I mean, mm. you need to ramp to make it work. Seven mana is just too much for this. Yeah. But and, you can. And and I think the paying mana to create a 3-3 three, three dinosaur, that's a bit too high costed as well I I don't mind that at all I don't mind that at all this is the last one of the later things that you play everything gets lauded everything's pumping up Mm. and you have the option to just make tokens from that point on so that was the uncommons now on to the rares ashes of the abhorrent one and a white for an enchantment players can't cast spells from graveyards or activated abilities of cards in graveyards whenever a creature dies you gain one life this is this is a good modern card. Zoink Scoobs. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's also going to stop a lot of your graveyard shenanigans in standard as well. Like, so they can't cast spells from graveyards. It doesn't stop Scarab God or Gift of the God Pharaoh. That specifically exiles a card from your graveyard and makes a token copy of it. So it doesn't stop that. It stops embalm. It stops eternalize. Um, and it's oh, it stops all the it stops all the aftermath cards. Yep. Ooh, this is a nasty sideboard card. Burning Sun's Avatar. Three and three red for a 6-6 six, six dinosaur avatar. In case avatar wasn't obvious enough. When Burning Sun's Avatar enters the battlefield, it deals three damage to target opponent and three damage to up to one target creature. Justin, I love this card. I know you're not so keen on it, but I love it. The versatility of being able to burn two things, lightning bolt a creature, lightning bolt your opponent, or possibly trigger an enrage on one of your creatures uh, in standard it's fine in anything else you're thinking of modern i know yeah. you're thinking of modern um it's probably just too expensive for modern if it had a keyword i think this would be definitely definite staple great card would have a lot more use mm. but in standard with the dinosaur enrage decks this is going to be really awesome death gorge scavenger two and a green for a three two dinosaur Whenever Death Gorge Scavenger enters the battlefield or attacks, you may exile target card from a graveyard. If a creature card is exiled this way, you gain two life. If a non-creature card is exiled this way, Death Gorge Scavenger gets plus one, plus one until end of turn. I like it a lot. Yeah, no, this is, again, this could be modern playable. 
Yeah, it, it has the hate. It has the hate for the God Pharaoh's gift, the Scarab God, a lot of things floating around the meta yeah. right now. And even if you're not really focused on that, it could become a 4-3 for 3. Hmm. Or a 3-2 that gives that nets you two life when it enters the battlefield. But the fact that it has targeted graveyard hate is always yeah. good. And it's on a dinosaur body. Emperor's Vanguard for three and a green. He's a human scout at 4-3. When Emperor's Vanguard deals combat damage to a player, it explores. This Ooh. is a top-end explore card. It's not really relevant for dinosaurs, but obviously it's an Empire of the Sun card, so that's yeah. why it's in this video. Black and green explore. Black and green explore could be a thing. When it deals combat damage to a player, it's a 4-3 for 4, and it has to get through to the player after it survives its summoning sickness. Trample? Mm, yeah. You, you, you want to attach Trample to this guy. Yeah, and it's got 3 toughness, so it's it's vulnerable to lightning strike. Mm. So I don't think this is amazing. I think this actually arguably could be an uncommon, but it's definitely a good sort of higher-end card in your Explore deck. Gorging Ceratops, 5 and 2 white for a 3-3 three, three dinosaur with double strike. Whenever Goring Ceratops attacks, other creatures you control gain double strike until end of turn. Well, that that's a completely fair and reasonable magic card. Yeah, well, it costs 7 mana. That's the reality. It costs 7 mana. It should be coming down and basically winning you games. Yeah. The problem is, the problem is it has to survive a rotation of summoning sickness. Unless you, you happen have. to have that guy that gives a dinosaur haste. Yeah. And in that scenario, this is bonkers. Yeah. Well, it's not even just dinosaurs. It's other creatures. Anything you control. Is oh, I didn't even strength. look at that. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's even worse. Yeah. I mean, you're going to play it alongside that guy that gives a dinosaur haste. So it's probably still the most relevant in dinosaur decks regardless. Growing Rites of Itlamok. It costs two and a green. And it's one of these legendary enchantments slash land cycles we have within this set. It's the green one, in fact. When Growing Rites of Itlamok enters the battlefield, look at the top four cards of your library. You may reveal a creature card from among them and put it into your hand. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in any order. At the beginning of your end step, if you control four or more creatures, which could be the turn it comes down, mm. transform this card. And it transforms into Itlamok, Cradle of the Sun. Oh, cool names, cool names. Uh, it taps for a green mana, or it taps to add a green mana for each creature you control. Which is Gaia's Cradle, which is about a $200 card. Yeah, that's, um, this is pretty good. You control four or more creatures. So, yeah, okay, in dinosaur decks, maybe not. They're lower creature count decks in general. Mm. But even, like, your little your little chumpy um uh, ramping guys can activate this. Yeah. Um, in green, see, green isn't so much a go white strategy, but in dinosaurs, you can make that happen. With white and red, you can make that happen for sure. Yeah, uh, a green for every creature you control, and if you have no creatures, it still taps for one. If hmm. you get board swept, it's still a, it still taps for one mana. Yeah. Kinjali's Sunwing to an a white for a two three dinosaur with flying creatures your opponents control into the battlefield tap it's the new thalia basically yeah new thalia yeah not bad it's got flying as well so rather than first strike so yeah if swinging at your opponent's important if flying is important um which is another archetype which is kind of evolving from what we're seeing from the Xlung cards mm. especially with favorable wins in the format again um yeah it's solid i yeah. like it Priest of the Awakening Sun. Talk about praising the sun. <laughs> Holy moly. Cosmo Mod is a 1 1. At the beginning of your upkeep, you may reveal a dinosaur card from your hand. If you do, gain 2 life. And for 3 and white, white, sacrifice him. Search your library for a dinosaur card, reveal it, put it in your hand, shuffle your library. So he chews up a dinosaur card for 5 mana and sacking him. It's, ooh, it's a long time he's got to yeah, survive. But at the same time, you're gaining 2 life every upkeep. Yes, it is showing off what you have. Yeah. It's like, look at the Gizheth. Look at it. Look at it. Look at it, Justin. Yeah. I have a Gizheth in my hand. Yeah. Every turn. <laughs> yeah. Like, all you need to do is have one random one that you just keep showing them. Yeah, you you, you just show them the bomb over and over again. You go, yeah. well, you, you're dealing with that later. Yeah. I hope you realize. And if they have a duress, well, oh well. <laughs> but still, um, yeah, it's nice. Mm. I, I like it. I like the life gain. I think... I think the tutoring effect is just a bit too slow. It, it's awkward because the way to get your, the first part of this card to work is to play him as soon as possible. The way to get the second part of this card to work is to play him as late as possible, and that's the issue. 
Yeah. Well, I mean, that's the thing. Like, he's good at the start of the game. He's good at the end of the game. Rampaging Ferocidon. Two and a red for a 3-3 dinosaur with menace. Players can't gain life. Whenever another creature enters the battlefield, Rampaging Ferocidon deals one damage to that creature's controller. Oh, it's so Ooh. red. That is so red. <laughs> this, this is good. Yeah. I mean, it turns off, yeah, Sun Guy, but, um, yeah, not bad. I don't think you play this with Sun Guy. I think no. you, you, this is a minor red card. Yeah. Um, this just wrecks vampires. Like, completely wrecks vampires. Regisaur Alpha. The cool names still continue for three red and green. It's a 4-4. Other dinosaurs you control have haste. So just in case that human doesn't come out, you have this guy. When Regisaur Alpha enters the battlefield, create a 3-3 green dinosaur creature token with trample. 7-7 across two bodies for five. And other dinosaurs you control have haste, including the token you just made. Yeah. Yeah, this is fun. This, ah, oh, this is a pain in the butt. <laughs> I don't look forward to playing against that. Like, we've seen a lot of dinosaurs that are like around six and seven going, ah, oh, it's pushing it a bit. No, this for five is absolutely justified. If anything, it's massively pushed. Rip Jaw Raptor, two and two green for a four five dinosaur within rage. Whenever Rip Jaw Raptor is dealt damage, draw a card. Yeah, card advantage for days. Mm. That's really good, isn't it? Yeah, no, this is good. You can trigger your own enrage abilities, but if you don't, you got this blocker that gives you card advantage. Yeah. It's just really solid. I like this card a lot. Sunbird's Invocation for five and a red. I think this counts as a um, Emperor of the Sun card. That's why it's in this video. It's an enchantment. Whenever you cast a spell from your hand, reveal it. Reveal the top X cards of your library where X is the spell's converted mana cost. You may cast a card revealed this way with converted mana cost X or less without paying its mana cost. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. It has build arounds, but end of the day, it's a six mana enchantment that gives you no value when it comes out. I don't like it for that reason. Okay. Yeah, I I understand that, but like the next turn you play the seven drop... um, Play a seven drop dinosaur, pull out another dinosaur. Yeah, I, I get it. You've got to set up a six drop into a seven drop though, and that's not always the easiest thing. But, but it's like, even if like you played a 5-drop and you got something 4 or less, and you also played a 1-drop. You're well, describing things that are very board state reliant. Yeah. That, that's, what, that's my problem with this. Yeah. Uh, this card is very much a magical Christmas land card. Exactly right. It's a sick drop that gives you no immediate value. Mm. Um, think of Vraska. Think of Ajani. Think of like the 6-drop Planewalkers, who are already giving you so much value the second they hit the table. It needs high-cost stuff to work around with it. Yeah. It needs a build around, and it doesn't give you immediate value. That's why I don't like it. Tilanali's Skin Shifter. Two and a red for a zero one human shaman with haste. Whenever Tilanali's Skin Shifter attacks, it becomes a copy of another target attacking, non legendary attacking creature until end of turn. Ooh, the build arounds. Yeah, the build arounds. I don't like that it's a one toughness creature for three. I feel like that could get really hurt quite easily. But yeah, great with dinosaurs, obviously. Yeah. That's what it's about. Tukatli on a guard for one and a white is a one three human soldier. Creatures entering the battlefield don't cause abilities to trigger. Just in case Panharmonicon was out of the meta enough as it is, <laughs> this just completely breaks that strategy. Uh, Panharmonicon's great. Um, it had some stuff from Hour of Devastation, like um, some of the Eternalized creatures. Yeah. But I feel like the hate is less relevant in this set. You know, opponents not gaining life is more relevant. Um, opponents not casting stuff from the graveyard is more relevant. Verdant Sun's Avatar. Five and two green for a 5-5 five, five dinosaur avatar. Because again, you need to know that it's an avatar. Absolutely. Whenever Verdant Sun's Avatar or another creature enters the battlefield under your control, you gain life equal to that creature's toughness. Yeah, it's a lot of life gain. Like, yeah, you can gain a lot of life. Like, it's coming into play, you're instantly gaining five life. It's going to make you tap out, though, so you're not going to get any more value out of it. So, a seven, I mean, it's going to, you're going to ramp into it. You're going to ramp into it, so it's probably like five or six cost for a five, five with five life. If it survives, you're getting a lot of value out of it the next turn and the turn after and the turn after and so on. Yeah, but... I'd rather just be swinging at my opponent and killing them. I agree. I'm just trying to justify it. Uh, It's definitely the weaker out of the avatars, that's for sure. So that was the rare cards. And finally, onto the mythics, we have 
Carnage Tyrant. Carnage Tyrant for four and two green. It's a seven six. Can't be countered. Trample hexproof. It's a French vanilla mythic card, mm. but I don't care. It's good. Yeah, it's it's anti blue. I don't like it. <laughs> oh wow, it's really anti blue, isn't it? Gisheth Sun's Avatar. Five red, green, and white for a legendary dinosaur avatar that's a 7-6 with Trample, Vigilance, and Haste. Whenever Gisharth Sun's Avatar deals combat damage to a player, reveal that many cards from the top of your library. Put any number of dinosaur creature cards from among them onto the battlefield and the rest onto the bottom of your library in a random order. Holy moly. It's an 8-drop, but is a completely justified 8-drop. You're getting that that ability triggering the turn it comes in. And this is what I'm talking about. Like with Sunbird's Invocation, you have to tap out and wait a turn. You tap out with this guy. You swing with Vigilance and Trample and Haste. You're going to hit your opponent's face and you're going to make that ability trigger straight away. Yeah. And if you don't hit your opponent's face, you're killing a lot of creatures with it. Indeed. Huatli, Warrior Poet for three red and white. It is a Planeswalker with three loyalty. Plus two, you gain life equal to the greatest power among creatures you control. Relevant with dinosaurs. Mm -hmm. Zero, create a 3-3 green dinosaur creature token with trample. That's great for zero. And Neg X, which is great because you can use it immediately as as she comes out. She deals X damage divided as you choose amongst any number of target creatures. Creatures dealt damage this way can't block this turn. You can ping down three blockers, swing with all your dinosaurs, GG. Yeah. Um... This is fantastic. You're making a token for zero. Excellent. Yes. Excellent. You, you always need a blocker. The second you have a force big enough to just wipe out your opponent, <laughs> ping three creatures, they can't block and swing. Yep. And Hawatley just closes out a game for you. Uh, it's a five drop Planeswalker card, which is doing arguably as much work as a six drop Planeswalker. Yep. I look at things like Ajani, the new Frasca, and I feel like Hawatley is almost just as good. The one thing which doesn't completely make it as good as those cards is the three loyalty. Lightning Strike kills it, and so you might want to plus two the second she comes out just to make sure she doesn't die. Yeah, and uh, I mean, you're also going to be gaining probably a fair bit of life. Yeah, with dinosaurs. It's board state reliant, um, but the cool thing is you can make a 3-3 dinosaur and then tick up yeah. to get three life. Yeah. That's all right. It's, it's ticking up by two. It's worth it to get three life for sure. Yeah. Definitely. Just a really good solid planeswalker. I really mm. like Whiteley. We also have Star of Extinction. Five, a red, and a red for a sorcery. Destroy target land. Star of Extinction deals 20 damage to each creature and each planeswalker. This card. Ooh, the, oh, the flavor. Yeah. Not the veggie sorus. <laughs> um, holy moly, it's just the flavor. I mean,. The format with standard already has Hour of Devastation. Mm. This is more expensive. So from that point of view, I'm like, I don't know if I can justify playing this more. See, I look at this in like a jank red Tron build. Oh, You, you play this. Of course you do. Yeah. Of course you do. Yeah, you play that and you play uh, Stuffy Doll and Boros Reckoner. Both of those say that if, you, if those creatures get dealt damage, they deal that amount of damage to a player. <laughs> Okay, yep, yeah, that's a thing. That's so, a thing in modern. Next we have Wakening Sun's Avatar. This is a 5 and 3 white for a 7-7 seven, seven dinosaur avatar. When Wakening Sun's Avatar enters the battlefield, if you cast it from your hand, destroy all non-dinosaur creatures. <laughs> ah! Yep. Oh, it's the board sweep. We, we don't... We, <laughs> it's the board sweep we weren't asking for, Wizards. <laughs> we really weren't asking for this. Um, it cost 8, but... Okay, it cost eight, so it costs the same as Gisheth. Gisheth is better. Let's not beat around the bush. It's better provided that you have a worse board state. Yes. Waking Sun's Avatar, yeah, it's good if you're really on the back foot. Gisheth, less so. I guess if your opponent's bearing down on you and you play Gisheth, it might not be enough to save you. Mm. Wakening Sun's Avatar would, but that's situational. Yeah. I think Gisheth is better if you ignore board state. So, that was all the dinosaurs for Ixalan. Oh boy, these are quite terrifying. Um, so, we've now done pirates. We've now done dinosaurs. These are easily the two most supported sets. We're going to do vampires and merfolk next. Um, they are far less supported, and thus those videos will be much shorter. Mm. 
But I still think there's some interesting stuff going on with them. But just in terms of our hype, I think these two tribes so far are the ones we're just really... Ooh, yeah. we're, we're quite yeah. jazzed for these. These are the good ones. These. Stay tuned for the rest of our Ixalan spoilers, and we will catch you in the next video. Bye.